Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. We are continuing the uh, Korea China Invitational League bet, well, not best of nine, but nine game show match series here between Bishop in our top right and in the bottom right, Xiao Kuka. Uh, it's been a good series so far. You can see the score is three to one for Bishop. Uh, I would say two of Bishop's victories. Uh, Shao Guga did get a lead in and Bishop fought back really well. And then the last game that we just had, uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out because damn, was that a close, excellent game. No one mining at the end, just craziness. So, <clears throat> you know, even though right now the score does look a little bit one-sided, you can see that it's actually, it's a pretty good match. Like it's not, you know, you're not looking at this. It's not just like, uh, Bishop wiping the floor with Shao Guga no matter what he does, right? There have been some of those. There have been some. Uh, for people that remember, actually, in this exact series, a while back, I had a Mihu versus Saber match, and it ended up 8-1 in Mihu's favor, and it, he was, it felt like he was trolling by the end, right? And that wasn't that wasn't a very good match, but <clears throat> you look at this, and I think the games are definitely high quality. I'm still excited to see what the final score is going to be. You know, again, it you're playing all nine games regardless, so... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I feel like Shagaga, like he does a lot of things very, very well. But Bishop finds like the one thing that he's not doing perfect and then is is really trying to punish because of that. Right. Like he's just he's nailing some of these pushes. We see there's certainly times where he doesn't have the size where he needs it or like the Zalt count is maybe a little bit too low and he engages. But we'll see what he can do here on Radeon. Right. Radeon is... Uh, a pretty decent map for Protoss vs. Terran. <clears throat> Looks like he's kind of going through the center. That's kind of interesting. Not exactly sure why he's going cross spawn scout. Uh, must have a build for close positions. You'll see the SCV coming behind him now. Oops. He's going to block the ramp. Watch. See? <clears throat> so basically, he was just ahead of the SCV. Right, there's a fading vision as you leave, so you can see a little bit further behind you. Also, probes have one more vision than SCVs, so he was quite sure that the SCV didn't see him. So, what you do is you come up and you block the ramp, and uh, then Terran can't scout until they get by. Here, Bishop got by pretty quickly, not the end of the world. <clears throat> and he's actually going for a very, very fast command center here, uh, sending a depot on the way as well as the gas. So, it's just a gasless command, like a 15 command center. Uh, and oh my god, <laughs> we're going into a citadel. Uh, second gate in the main base. So this is going to be just a very, very fast Dark Templar rush. Um, yeah, the two Marines really pushing that probe back. That's kind of nice. We'll see if Bishop times out his, his engineering bay because, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, the one actual victory that Shaoguga has so far Bishop did not have that engineering bay, and the uh, three-gate Dark Templar rush actually ended up killing him. So we'll see if something similar can occur for Shao Guga. Wouldn't that be funny if, like, the wins he gets are, you know, he gets ahead in a lot of games, and the wins he gets are only DT games. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Templar Archives is on the way. Um, so basically, there's a clock in your head as Terran. If you have no idea what's going on, you need to make your engineering bay at 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Very easy to remember. Uh, and if you do that, you will hold even the fastest DT rush. We'll see if that is going to be uh, the timing here. He's got a little bit of time left. You can see the two DTs on the way. It takes 38 seconds for an engineering bay to build. There it is. Look at that. Even beforehand. That is a very safe eBay timing. Now... There are technically ways that you can cut stuff, so much stuff that you actually get even quicker DTs. Gets no info with that. But he's going to... Look, he's making the fourth Marine, too. That's exactly what you need to do. You need to have four Marines in your bunker, missile turret, and just watch the minimap. Uh, this is going to be a big advantage for Bishop, almost certainly. One base DT, when it gets held, you're not, you're not feeling super hot about that. That's for sure. Um, you know, sometimes it's an Arbiter follow-up, sometimes it's a Gateway Man follow-up. And if you're Nyokin, it is a Carrier follow-up. We'll see which one he's going to be going for. Turret on the way. DT's coming up. 
And you can see this turret is going to be done in time. Actually, just barely in time, too. Damn. He's not going to be too happy to see that, man. This was a very fast DT rush. Okay, he's going to just run by with them. I don't think running by with two was a good move at all. I think running by with one is totally fine. You force some more turrets. You run around. You see what you can do. In fact, he might be able to get over here and deal a bit of damage with these two DTs, huh? He's going to go for the turret, really? Yeah, I thought maybe going towards the, the ramp and killing SCVs could have been a bit better. So this is not working out for him. The two DTs are basically wasted. They're not going to be able to live. Uh, kind of a funny secondary DT, uh, secondary turret. I think that was just a block here. <clears throat> SCV gets in, sees range. We can see a robo down here. Does he make more DTs? A dry drop in the main is like a real Hail Mary. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, siege mode finishes up. But yeah, this looks this looks pretty much impossible. The fact that the SCV got in means that he saw the Nexus as well. So you're not even afraid of like four gate speeds a lot, which sometimes people follow up with. This should be this should be a pretty straightforward game, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do like the vulture speed second. This is a situation where like even the turret I don't think is really needed. Could have just brought an SCV up and hit it with the tank. Uh, you know, we have a couple of um, comsats coming up as you need. He's getting speed, which I think is the perfect upgrade in a situation like this where your opponent's been like really tech heavy and aggressive and hasn't done anything. You want to get that speed out to be able to get across the map and maybe scout a little bit with. It's a nice volley there on that one goon. And what is he going to do? I actually, I'm... I'm not entirely sure because the two different follow-ups for Protoss are generally, again, generally from this, are Quick Arbiter and Gateway Man, and they require different counters. That's a big part of why those are good follow-ups, right? So, like, if you play against Arbiter, you generally want a faster command center, and if you play against Gateway Man, you just want a lot of factories. Either way, he has a, a SCV just sitting here on the edge. That might be for a missile turret. You know, a DT drop follow-up is like, like it is certainly a follow-up, um, but it's not very good. It's just like complete, complete risk. But sometimes people feel like they need to do it. Like uh, it, sometimes Terrans will, um, you know, it over hit, try to hit their timing, right? So they'll be like, they'll make the turret, they'll block the DTs. They're like, okay, now I just, he's probably being really greedy. I got to make a ton of units and attack. And then a DT drop comes and it's like, oh, you didn't make turrets in your main because you knew that it was stupid to drop? Well, now you lose. Uh, but that is something that happens occasionally. Mines out for these uh, vultures that are running around and scouting. Siege tank production consistently. I think he'll just throw down two more facts. I think he's just going to go five fact again, man. Yeah, there they are. Two more factories go down, so getting into that five factory play once again. He's laid mines at both of the potential thirds. He'll probably check the other bases just in case. You never know. Maybe he snuck a third elsewhere. But right now, it's just heavy Dragoon. Two more gates coming up. Like, this is this is not a pretty build <laughs> from Shaogaga. Like, he's just making a ton of units, uh, probably to try to hold on against an incoming attack. But, like, we're already almost there from uh, from Bishop. The one thing to know is that this is going to be a quick push and it's going to have very little anti-air. So, actually, a shuttle with DTs here would have been very, very good. High Templar's coming out. Shuttle as well. So, it looks like he wanted to utilize Storm. I don't think that's going to be quite ready before this game is decided. Like, look, he's got mines so far forward. And, look, he sees, he sees goons over here. So, he knows exactly where everything's at. He can easily run up, get into position, and do a very strong, very fast push. <clears throat> so, yeah, liking this very much for Bishop. Obviously, a, a, a rough, terrible opener here for Shaogaka. That very risky DT opener doing nothing for him. Siege is up. Lays mine so these goons can't get back to their friends. Yeah, going to plaster them. Psystorm almost ready. You know, it is it is kind of a clump push, so like that is a possibility that Psystorm can do something here. But it needs to do a lot, because even if this push doesn't work, it's still two base versus two base. Well, I guess he started the third Nexus, so at least there's that, I guess. But yeah, even if you lose your army at this point, 
Mm, well, Protoss would certainly be ahead, but it probably would still be playable for Terran. It matters how much is left over for Protoss, of course, but uh, starting out a bunker and banking some missile turrets here as well. I don't know what he's thinking with that one. That one's pretty far out there. All right, loads up that bunker. You do want to get another missile turret up here, and in fact, I believe that there's no room for a missile turret there. I think this is, yeah, I think that's covering the build space, so maybe that was the closest spot for a turret, and he can't build it now. <laughs> so he's actually missing that detection. Not that he needs it. There's no more DTs. Here we go. Here's the attack in. Zelt legs are actually not ready, unfortunately. Throws out some decent size storms, but he's going to lose everything, and that's going to be kind of a one-sided one. The cheese not working out for Shaoguga. Good uh, execution of the push from Bishop. GG. All right, so uh, we're just going directly into game number six since uh, that was a that was a pretty fast and kind of disappointing one. Uh, it's on retro, and the barracks has been started. The gateway has been started. They're vertical spawns from each other. So, I mean, that's just something to note that the third base of Bishop, the natural third base, is very, very close to Shaoguga. So that could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, not as likely for for Bishop to expand here. Well, I mean, you can do five-fact push, and if you come down this ramp successfully, take that as your third. That is a possibility, but you're probably already winning the game if you're, you're already down that ramp with the five-fact push, and it's secure enough that you feel like you can make a base there. Now, <clears throat> kind of a forward uh, barracks here. I think there's actually a Sim City here that blocks everything. Like the barracks here, Depot Factory. Nah, I guess he's not going for that, uh, which is fine. It's whatever. The uh, I don't believe anything fits through here. So that just makes kind of a nice micro point. Puts the factory behind. Sometimes there are funny looking little walls that can be done. I don't think walls are very good in TVP opening games. Actually, that would be kind of an interesting thing to talk about. A lot of times, I, or sometimes, rather, I see questions about why don't people wall in like they're letting these zealots walk in their base. Uh, the wall-ins are actually not that good in this matchup. They can be useful in certain situations, and if you catch someone doing something like proxy gate zealot rush, you'll just win the game. But that's pretty rare, right? Um, and oh, I'm talking like maybe a double proxy gate, right? You'll just crush them. But... It, like the regular old depot barracks wall-ins first off if a probe comes the amount of mining time you're losing sending up two scvs to deal with that is insane and then like once dragoons come you get in trouble uh also it used to let you skimp on marines nowadays you don't skimp on marines because if you skimp on marines and they bring dragoons then you have to go siege mode so it's just it's not that good it's better just build everything around your command center and have a good sim city and micro well so, looking at this game, this is a standard factory expansion from Bishop, but it's a proxy robo from uh, Shaokuga. Now, <clears throat> the proxy robo, he's going to know something's up. Notice how he's going through here, right? And this actually is reminding me very quickly of the Citadel game in one regard because of what I'm about to say as far as analyzing. I can't believe this. He's going to kill Probe uh, because he's microing here, right? So, he's microing here, and the SCV actually does get a kill. Uh, looks like Bishop maybe a little bit too greedy with this. This is actually very good for Shaoguka. Except for the fact he's going to lose three probes. Dude, that's insane. But he's dealing a lot of damage across the map, too. I don't know, man. Okay, so three workers go down. That was, like, that counterplay is amazing from from Bishop. It just, Shaoguka was attacking, and, you know, you, you get a minimap ping that you're under attack, but you're not looking at the minimap while you're microing, right? And you're already getting a, your your units are under attack or whatever while you're microing here because he is fighting you. So uh, that's, you know, that's why dual prong stuff works so well. Now, <clears throat> what I wanted to mention is uh, Proxy Robo Reaver and why this reminds me of the Citadel game, right? Is because I talked in the Citadel game uh, where it was a Dark Templar rush and he didn't go for like turret siege mode. Uh, and I talked about how, like, lesser players would probably do that because they hit it on the ladder a lot, right? So, basically, as a, like, if you are not playing against only pros all day, you'll actually play against crap like this. And the thing is, the only thing that catches everything is siege mode turret, okay? Siege mode turret catches everything. Here we have mines on the way. Mines... And vultures don't really do anything against a very fast reaver. Now, I mean, maybe the maybe you get lucky in the mine lands, 
uh, it hits a reaver, right? And then suddenly it's like, okay, yeah, this this was great. What a great defense. But that is absolutely something you cannot count on in this day and age. And the odds of having mines in anti-reaver locations, extremely, extremely low. So yeah, that's, it, that's why it reminds me of it, where it's like, okay, if something's wrong, you're up here, you're in his base, he's losing probes, he doesn't have range going, he's missing buildings, there's no nexus, just get siege and turrets, right? Like that's that's what a ladder, uh, a ladder Terran would do. Someone who plays the the filth and the scum of A and B rank, for instance, where this build will come out a lot. Let's see, let's see. There's an armory. There's only one factory. There is an eBay. But look, not ready for this at all. Not ready at all. Siege mode is not done. How do you deal with Reaver right now? This is going to be rough. Now he does have some mines out here, so actually going to catch some units, which is kind of nice. But there's going to be a lot of damage. Right now, 34 to 23 SCD. So obviously, he needs to get a lot of damage as well. Oh my god, already a big hit. Already two very nice hits here. That one, not as much. Just some splash damage coming out. All right, going to fly forward. You want to make sure that these turrets don't finish. I actually wanted to see him drop the Reaver there and get a Scarab off. Okay, going to drop Zealots to drag the mines. He actually gets kills with that as well. Now, this might get trapped because he did not deal with this turret. No, there is a way out, actually. Going straight, he should be able to just barely get out of there. Okay, lifts up. Uh, that's why you drop to kill the turret every time. Like, if the turret's building, you just right-click the SCV with the scarab, and then this isn't building, and you're good. Oh, my God. I actually did not know. I thought for sure a turret would hit the, the missiles would hit that. Okay, he flies back through the main base. Okay, by the way, it was 34 to like 21 or whatever before, and now it's 22, 23. So he's already dealt uh, very significant damage. He starts his own Nexus. This is still okay for Bishop. It's still okay. It's not great, obviously. Did he get shuttle speed on one base? The Madman. All right, gonna fly back towards the natural. He only has a Reaver here, so you can't really do that much. It's going to take sick hits, so I think it's time to just fly out and, like, reinforce a bit. If he had any other units in here, it'd be doable. Oh, that's a sick hit, actually. Oh, my God. SCV's down to 21. That was fantastic. I did not think he was going to find a hit that quality at this point. Still flying back and forth. Oh, no, that's not going to work. Maybe he's going to wait. Okay, he's. that's kind of weird. Pushing through this bunker that's empty, coming forward. If he can draw this tank shot once, he can drop this. Yeah, and that's exactly what he goes for. But that was perfect right there, leaving those on high ground. And now suddenly all the goons walk in and are made into blue soup. The three Marines up here are MVPs. If those weren't there, very good scarab hits come out. He kills the tank. Maybe he kills more SCVs. Instead now, he's lost his entire army, basically, right? A few more goons have been made back at home. Remaking a Reaver has some observers. Okay, so there's like some things going on. As far as Bishop goes, he's on one factory. He does have his plus one. Have you ever seen someone with plus one attack in one factory? <laughs> it's not very common. It's a weird game we're in right now. <laughs> Vulture harassing this natural base. He threw down a mine, so that's really annoying. In fact, the probes are near there. He's going to be careful about that. Ooh, walking through a mine there, but that's okay. As long as he can save some probes. Okay, worker count is to an advantage for Bishop. But Bishop has very poor production. Couple more gates coming up. I like the choice of getting some heavier unit production, but I think also you want to take a third Nexus as quickly as possible here as Shaukuga. His observer's in here. It's checking out. Okay, a couple more factories coming. This might be a three factory push type of game. It is possible. He might just go up to five as well because he's so good with the five. Maybe that's going to make him feel really, really strong. Yeah, he's getting uh, the, the Goliath range upgrade and everything as well. Getting plus one armor. So those kind of point towards that. But um, occasionally there's in, in lower econ situations, there are like three factory pushes that can occur. But normally you would get speed at a time like this. The vulture speed. And, and try to push, but because there's Reaver out, it kind of makes sense that you wouldn't be doing that. Those are generally those lower econ situations are uh, pre-Reaver, so. Yeah, we'll see exactly what he wants to end up doing. Uh, a couple Goliaths on the way. 
along with Siege Tank production still. Vulture just kind of running around, and you can see Xiao Gaga definitely does want to take that third base pretty quickly. Definitely the right choice there. Let's see what the Reaver does harassment-wise. Okay, a hit on the turret. No biggie. Oh. All right, a little bit of damage there. Yeah, very good micro, very good micro. Bishop may be, like, uh, overdoing it over here slightly. So he's going to get a little bit of damage there. Equal as far as workers go. Five factory here for Bishop. We'll see if he adds. I think he'll add his second add-on now after this Goliath pops out. That seems to make the most sense. Uh, you would want that, that second add-on, I think. I think you want to pop your tanks up a bit more, right? Right now, he's got seven, which is not terrible, and he's making another. Oh, okay. So this is a very rare push that you're seeing where it's like a Goliath tank base push, and it will have a follow-up of Vultures. But when you're... This is, again, another... These games have been wild, right? So in this type of situation where you're playing against mostly Dragoon Shuttle Reaver, you can... And it's one of these weird spots where your factories became late. A lot of times you have this huge gas bank. Goliaths only take six more seconds to make than a Vulture, but against Dragoons, Reavers, and Shuttles, they fight much better. So in this weird situation, you can actually go pure Goliath tank and attack. Uh, it's a rare one, but it's actually very, very good. And as his Vulture speed is finishing, he can just rally in Vultures, and he'll have such a sturdy army. Look at that. Puts a ton of damage down. Shagaga has to be careful here. If he loses his shuttle, I think that Bishop might just roll him. In fact, Bishop up in supply right now, despite being down seven workers. So not a good sign for our Protoss player. He's trying to get uh, Zealot speed right now. Okay, blows up a lot of tanks. Great targeting. The Dude, with the Reavers gone, it's like basically just Dragoons now against a very anti-Dragoon comp. Tough stuff. Brings down the rest of the Dragoons. You know, they're sitting here attacking mines and vultures and whatnot while the tanks walk up, so that's never a good situation. I think Bishop's going to clean him up pretty quickly. These cheesy plays not quite working out. You know, I think that this game, Shaogaga, like the, the big problem was the three Marines flanking here. That was really a like an insanely strong move. Maybe if the Reaver had landed here instead, but then he's in turret range, right? So like Bishop had a very good understanding of where that Reaver was probably going to come out. But like, I think that alone was, was the big mistake. He was doing well till that. So GG is called. Bishop takes another one and technically will be... Uh, in a winning position for the rest of this uh, nine game series, but we are going to finish them out. Uh, hope that you guys are enjoying. Thanks for watching.